Welcome to my tutorial. This will be a tutorial on Photoshop version CS2 and how I use it to create a design study to be used for a Boleno engraving. This design study was never intended to be a finished drawing. What I want and need are proportions. I know I want three geese, but how large they should be, where to position them, how tall the mountain should be, how many trees, and how much swamp, and where to place the clouds, etc. As I understand it, Boleno simply means engraver in Italian. One more thing I need to straighten out before we get into Photoshop. Photoshop is not a drawing program as such. Photoshop is a program used to manipulate images. This could be a drawing from a scanner, from a drawing program, CorelDRAW or Illustrator, a picture downloaded from the internet or a photo taken from a camera. I am not a Photoshop expert by any means, but I have used Photoshop for several years. However, I use it so infrequently I have difficulty remembering the procedures. So when I do use it, I end up having to watch several different tutorials to get up to speed. So I have decided to do this tutorial as much for my own benefit as well as others. I have created a folder on the desktop and named the folder Photoshop Drawing Folder. Let's take a look inside the folder. What you see are files I have gathered together for use in this design. Each file is saved as a JPEG image. I will explain how I use each file as I bring them into Photoshop. With that said, we might as well get right into Photoshop. Double click the Photoshop shortcut. And this is Photoshop's opening page, the welcome screen. Photoshop offers several how-to tutorials. However, most tutorials are not designed for the engraver. I will let you explore these on your own. To remove the welcome screen, select Close. You will notice I sometimes use click and select interchangeably. To me they are one and the same. Let me show you around a bit. Select Window and another menu pops up. The check marks indicate files that Photoshop comes pre-configured with. The check tools are called toggles. For example, move down to Navigator. Click once and the Navigator is removed from the workspace. Click again and it returns. Notice the Navigator does not show anything in its space at this time. Select Window again. Click. Click each tool off one at a time. Now, how many times has this happened to you? You're trying to learn a new program and you get it so totally screwed up you don't know how to get it back. Well, Photoshop has this covered. Select Windows again, click. Come down to Workspace and click. Move over to Default Workspace and click and everything returns just as it was before. Let's open a file with Photoshop. Select File, click, come down to Browse and click. Select Photoshop Drawing Folder and double click. Select the file Blank Page and double click. Blank Page is a drawing representing a white rectangular 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. I named the file blank page and saved the file as a JPEG image. I use CorelDRAW to create the files. If you don't have CorelDRAW, you might use Adobe Illustrator or one of the many free drawing programs. Do a Google search for free vector graphics editors and take your pick. Now the image of the 8.5 by 11 blank page is displayed on the workspace. But something else has happened. Several things have changed on the workspace. Check the navigator in the upper right side of the workspace. The 
navigator displays a miniature version of the image that's on the workspace. Notice the slider below. You can use the slider to zoom into different areas of the image on the workspace. I will demo the slider, the zoom tool, a little later. Check the third tool, the history tool. The history tool keeps a running tally of each change you make to the workspace. This can be very useful. Now check the fourth tool, the layers tool. Layers always shows the first image loaded and calls it background and locks it. Notice the small image of a lock. Photoshop restricts the changes you can make to the background layer and indicates so with a lock. We for sure can't change the order of the background layer. But what we can do is make a copy of the background layer. And like most things in Photoshop, there are several ways to accomplish the same thing. If you will look along the bottom of the Layers tool, the tool just to the left of the bin, the garbage can, is the Create a New Layer tool. Click and hold the background layer and drag down to the Create a New Layer tool and release and Photoshop creates a background copy for us. Layers now shows the new layer and has named it Background Copy and history shows we have made a duplicate layer. Now you might wonder exactly what is all this layers business. Think of layers as eight and a half by eleven sheets of clear acetate, clear plastic, that we can draw pictures on. Stack them one on top of the other and then change the order of the stack according to whatever is needed. So now we have a copy of the background layer that we can color, change the order, or manipulate it any way we like. Let's change the background copy layer to landscape mode. Rotate the image 90 degrees. Select the background copy. It's blue. Select image. Come down to rotate canvas. Move over to 90 degrees CW clockwise and click and the image is rotated. Now let's take the original background layer completely out of the picture, so to speak. All we have to do is click on the eye, just to the left of the background layer. And it will not have any influence on our picture at all. The picture is still there. We can open it again if we need it. But for now you cannot see it. Since both layers are white, you cannot tell which drawing you're looking at. Just believe me, you cannot see the original copy. I will demonstrate the eye tool later. Let's adjust the workspace a little bit. Click and hold the lower right hind corner and drag down and to the right and release. Hold the control key and hit plus and the image fills the area. 